Imagine a future where you can pull out your phone, order a drink or some food, and within minutes, a drone is dropping it off out of the sky. Drone delivery might seem like science fiction, but the reality is this technology is expanding rapidly. And big tech companies from around the world are racing to pull ahead of the competition. Cars with combustion engines have dominated our logistics networks for the better part of a century. But drones have emerged as a legitimate contender, and the race is on. <laughs> But what are the chances that you'll actually have food or medicine flown right to your door with a drone anytime soon? Now that is a billion dollar question that big tech companies are desperate to answer. But this is an increasingly competitive space. Food delivery apps exploded in popularity during the pandemic and they're expected to get even bigger in the coming years. But drone deliveries are gaining some serious momentum despite plenty of questions remaining. Like, how much will it cost you? Are they safe to fly over people and roads? And do they pose a threat to your privacy? What is clear though, is that we're now in a new delivery arms race with companies vying for their piece of the pie and for a chance at global drone domination. Okay, so let's break down the two main types of drone delivery, last mile and long range. Last mile is focused on delivering mostly food and medicine relatively short distances to people's doors, and long range is pretty much exclusively used to transport essential medical items like blood and prescriptions to remote locations. We're going to visit some of the world's leading drone delivery operations on our journey. But first, what do we actually know about how many drone deliveries are happening around the world, where they're happening, and what's getting delivered the most? Well, global deliveries jumped 80% in 2022, and projections for last year are moving in the same direction. Of those deliveries, the Asia-Pacific leads the pack behind Africa and North America, and medical items made up the bulk of deliveries behind grocery items and food from restaurants. But despite those numbers, it's still really important to keep in mind that the drone delivery industry as a whole is still relatively young, and some would even say behind expectations. But I think there's a lot of people in the space that are just, maybe disappointed isn't the, the right word to use, but just, just wanting and expecting it to be that much further along. It's now been over a decade since Jeff Bezos unveiled his vision for a future powered by drone delivery, but even then it was clear that the regulation and technology needed a lot of work. You know, I don't want anybody to think this is just around the corner. This is years of additional work from this point. But well, years but means is five, ten, four, five years? I think so. Zipline is a leading drone delivery company based out of the US with delivery networks across Africa, Europe and increasingly in the United States. CEO Keller Clifton says the promises made by Amazon early on created a really unrealistic expectation about the timeline the technology was on before it even had a chance to prove itself. You know, drone delivery might be particularly susceptible because like 10 years ago, you know, one of the biggest companies on earth made a ton of promises about what drone delivery was going to do in a few years. And then none of those promises came true. So I think that there is this sense of like, oh yeah, we were promised it was going to happen. It didn't. So it must be impossible. The starting gun for drone delivery sounded very early. It wasn't actually until 2019 that this facility in the Australian capital of Canberra became the first last mile drone delivery site of its kind in the world. Amazon and Jeff Bezos were also beaten to the punch by Wing, owned by Google's parent company, Alphabet. Australia was, and still is, really ahead of the curb when it comes to drone delivery because the country's aviation regulator, CASA, made it a priority years ago to integrate the technology into the country's airspace without sacrificing any safety concerns. This site in Canberra achieved five years ago what many countries are still trying to do today, operate a fleet of delivery drones beyond visual line of sight from a central command centre. And despite one very viral encounter with an unhappy neighbour, the Canberra facility had no other major safety incidents. This was a really big step 
not just for our company, but I think for drone delivery more broadly. This is where we went into a suburban area and built a facility like this where both drones and merchants could operate from and where people could place regular orders um, for consumer items to be delivered by drone. And this, for a number of years, was one of the only facilities in the world of its kind. When I visited, the facility was basically empty and flights have since stopped altogether in Canberra because Wing have now shifted their focus to a new city in Logan, south of Brisbane, and to a new model where drones are based on the roofs of major shopping centres. And that means merchants no longer have to bring things to the warehouse or set up kitchens in the warehouse to prepare things for drone delivery. So in addition to having more merchants we can offer drone delivery to, it means more people can actually have access to drone delivery. The core factor that allows drone delivery to make any sense financially for operators is rooted in regulation, or specifically, whether they can get approval to fly beyond the visual line of sight. This is absolutely critical because without it, drone operators have to physically monitor their drones doing a delivery from start to finish, which we've actually seen happen a lot in the US where regulation has been quite slow to develop. The launch pads have pilots, visual observers, and delivery specialists. The Federal Aviation Administration oversees America's extremely crowded airspace, and it's been very conservative, and some would even say stagnant when considering how drones fit into the picture. Drone operators have been getting around this with individual exemptions, and although the FAA is overhauling its approach to approving drone delivery operators, for now, the situation is putting a cap on the industry's ability to expand in the US. Without a rule in place allowing operations to, to scale, um, that is really holding the, the industry back. Instead, they, they, each company has to go through a fairly laborious process uh, each time they want to open up a, a new site for, for delivery. And it, it, takes, uh, it takes a lot of time. But there are signs of progress. In August last year, Walmart celebrated 10,000 US drone deliveries by dunking a two foot wide Oreo into a giant cup of milk. Their most popular delivery item was Oreos, if you didn't get that already. And just a few months ago, Zipline made US history when it was approved to fly beyond visual line of sight out of its Salt Lake City facility. And the company says it's now expanded those flights to its Bentonville, Arkansas site as well. So I think the way to think about it is you're going from serving maybe 2,000 homes to serving more like 2 million homes from a single hub or distribution center. So that's a really big difference. That's why that approval is so important. It means you're increasing by 1,000x the number of customers whose lives can be improved by the technology and by the service. Very soon after Zipline's approval, Wing also got the thumbs up from the FAA to fly beyond visual line of sight across a massive patch of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, including within previously restricted airspace around its international airport, which is a watershed milestone for integrating drone delivery into the US airspace. In addition to increasing the range and potential customers of drone delivery, beyond visual line of sight approval also drives down labor costs as well. Modelling by consulting firm McKinsey suggests that without line of sight approval, drone delivery could be more expensive than delivering by car, but with it, deliveries could be as cheap as $1.80. For example, Wing says that they have approval in Australia for one observer to monitor up to 15 autonomous drones at once. And so as drone delivery players are able to actually accommodate more drones per pilot or operator of that drone, they're able to significantly bring their costs down and actually have kind of a financially viable option for drone deliveries. On the other side of it, exactly how that's going to play out in terms of the, the market demand and what people are going to pay for for something to be delivered by drone or how that changes expectation of something to be honest, I don't think that that has been really resolved I mean, it's not on, any, on any level. But what about privacy? Could a delivery drone conceivably spy on you through your window? No, it's not spying on you. We don't keep camera footage from the aircraft. Uh, we don't store any footage ourselves. It does have sensors on it that it uses kind of like a human to land, but we don't record that and keep it. Last mile drone delivery is gaining some serious momentum. Australia's forward-thinking regulations have given Wing the space to innovate and expand their operations while US regulations catch up. But it's not all good news. I mean, take Amazon. 
Despite firing the gun on drone delivery, their initiative has faced serious challenges with massive layoffs and missed milestones. But where there's way less debate around viability is in long-range medical delivery. Australian operator Swoop Aero has been delivering medical supplies in Africa since launching in Malawi in March of 2020, and they've since expanded to other African countries, the UK, Ireland, Singapore, and the US. The company made history in early 2019, delivering vaccines to remote parts of Vanuatu. At the moment, this is just a trial. What's being tested is whether this radical new solution is cost effective and whether it can be scaled up. Swoop says it's since delivered over 1.6 million items by drone globally and currently serves 4.5 million people with the aim to grow that number to a billion by 2030. Drone delivery has been around for a long time at the moment, but it's typically been used for uh, kind of novel things. You know, we've seen uh, some companies are delivering like roast chickens and coffees. Some companies have tried delivering pizzas. I'm not a proponent of the skies black with drones. It's not a reality that there's going to be hundreds of drones flying around delivering all kinds of things. It's going to be very specific use cases, and it's about augmenting the drone technology into the existing transport and services infrastructure to fundamentally change how that whole system operates. There are many reasons why Swoop and Zipline have focused so much on Africa. Poor road infrastructure, massive distances and less dense airspace are all factors that make drone delivery a fast and cost-effective option. But the inherent value of delivering essential medical items is the most important factor. We do about two emergency deliveries a week and that can range from anything for oxytocin from a mother that's just given birth at a hospital in central Malawi through to blood plasma or even things like rabies vaccines for someone that's been bitten by a rubber dog. Zipline's operations in Rwanda particularly have helped transform the country's healthcare system. A report published in the Science Robotics Journal found Zipline's delivery of blood in Rwanda had reduced the mortality of new mothers suffering postpartum hemorrhaging by 51% and reduced the exploration of blood by 67%. Rwanda has now greatly expanded the application of drones in its airspace to include the delivery of agricultural products, e-commerce, and potentially a new national postal service centered around drones. Zipline has spent seven years driving down the unit economic cost curve of this kind of technology, going from a place where it was really, really expensive and only made sense for the most desperate healthcare emergencies to a place where today it is net net less expensive than delivering, doing a, a similar delivery using a car or a motorcycle. Zipline and Swoop say they're both financially viable businesses today and that a lot of that can be credited to the value of medical delivery versus more novel last mile items. And Swoop has now expanded into Australia, establishing a regional medical delivery network in the state of Queensland, which they say is the largest of its kind in a high income country. Phase one of the network is currently in operation with regulatory approval for an area of 40,000 square kilometres. People living within this network are able to order medical items like prescriptions and lab results, expanding healthcare services to regional and remote populations. A second phase is awaiting approval, which would expand the coverage area to a massive patch of southern Queensland. Swoop says that this network could one day extend into Brisbane's metro area as well, connecting a major city to its regional neighbours. There's this new opportunity to leverage the sky to create value for society. And so whether we're talking about equitable access to healthcare for people in regional areas, so the 2 million Australians who don't live within an hour of a hospital, or the 60 million Americans that don't live within an hour of a pharmacy, or whether we're talking about how to decarbonise a metro logistics network by picking the 10% of locations that add 50% of the road kilometres and taking them out to help us get to a net zero by 2030. Uh, that's kind of how we can add value back with this technology. Drones have come a long way in a short time, but they still have a long way to go to reach the finish line. Whatever the finish line actually is, it depends who you ask. There are really no limits to the application of drones, from fighting wildfires, surveying construction sites and infrastructure, agriculture, security. The technology is much more than just a platform for delivery. Amazon's bold promises a decade ago have had far-reaching implications about how we define whether drone delivery will or will not succeed. But the race for drone delivery is speeding up, and we're getting much closer to an answer 
every day.